This is the Fantex Eclipse P400. It's an ATX case aimed at users who want great value for money and who have no interest in fitting one of these silly optical drives. But is it actually any good and should you get one? I built a PC in it to find out. So then, the Fantex Eclipse P400. The one I've got here is the gunmetal grey version, but it also comes available in white or black. Now the most interesting thing about this case, I didn't actually find out until I'd finished building it, and that's that it only costs in the UK around about £50, and thus puts it firmly in the budget category. Taking off the side panels is very simple. The thumb screws at the back stay on, so you're not going to lose them. And inside reveals the accessory box and the internals of the case. Now the P400 is an ATX case and it also supports micro ATX and limited support for E-ATX. So if you do want to fit an absolutely massive motherboard in a small case, you can do it on this one, though I probably wouldn't recommend it. The left side panel is windowed and also comes equipped with sound and vibration dampening foam for a general quieter PC. The front of the case comes with two USB 3.0 ports as well as a headphone jack, microphone jack, power button, and then you've got three buttons underneath that lip there where you've got a fan controller, an LED controller, as well as your reset button. Down the bottom you have an LED that you can change colour with that aforementioned button. On the top of the case you will find you have two removable vibration covers and you can swap these out for fan dust filters if you're going to be putting fans in here, though note they're not included as standard. In order to access the front fans on your PC you're going to need to take the front cover off. This is very easy to do and reveals yet more noise dampening material as well as some air holes where your air will come through. Make sure you use static pressure fans here though. Moving to the right hand side and you'll find that the side panel comes off. It's completely opaque and of course this is where all your wires are going to be. But the side panel too is covered in noise dampening material which does help to keep your PC nice and quiet. Moving around to the back of the case, you'll find the usual stuff here. You've got a 120mm fan pre-applied. Note that you can't fit a 140mm fan here. And if you move down the bottom of the case, you'll find a removable dust filter uh, that removes and goes back in very easily. So then, that's the case, but what is it actually like to build in? Well, I used a micro ATX motherboard and this immediately caused me a load of hassle because I needed to use pliers to remove the pre-applied standoffs that I've pre-fitted for ATX motherboards. The bottom 120mm fan is one of two, the other one is located at the back, but I also fitted a Corsair H90 and this water cooler uses a 140mm radiator which can only go at the front of the case. The top of the case doesn't actually support radiators at all, so please bear this in mind. The 120mm fan is the other fan that is fitted as standard at the back of the case. Something that often suffers on more budget orientated cases is the cable management and I know Sharkoon cases did suffer from this problem back when I used to use them. And in this case it's not too much of a problem at all. Same goes around the back, there's actually quite a lot of clearance here so if you want to hide your cables you can. Yes I know I haven't done the best job here and it was very difficult to close the back panel but as I'm always modifying my PC for the channel to be honest cable ties aren't always my favourite things to use. Moving on to my favourite thing about the case though was just how easy it was to apply 3.5mm drives into the case. Like I've never ever had this much ease before, literally just drop it in to the pre-applied holes and then you just snap them shut and insert them in. Why can't all cases be this easy? I know some have similar methods but this is by far the best one I've ever used. On the topic of drives though, you have two slots and you can fit two 3.5 inch drives down here. This I believe is removable, but then you also have two SSD slots, so you can have a maximum of four drives in total, assuming you don't use sticky tape or anything like that. Down the bottom you'll find the basement and there really isn't much room here at all. And I used quite a large HX1200i from Corsair and this took up most of the room. And to be honest, if you didn't have a modular power supply, I think you would suffer here a little bit. You've got more cable management holes at the top here and you've also got some straps that you can use to clamp the cables in place. There's a nice big cutout so if you do want to use a water cooler, uh, this is very easy to do as well. 
And the only real problem I had is that the Corsair link box that I'm using for a separate video had to go in the windowed bit of the case in the bit you can see because there wasn't any room for it in the basement down below, which is one of the main things and one of the main reasons why you might have a basement, but there you go. The PC build time was around about an hour and a half, two hours. Definitely would have been quicker if I hadn't had to muck about with those standoffs. And the main problem that I did encounter was just how easy it is to get marks on the case itself. It really does seem to be a fingerprint magnet. But there we go, that was building in the case. It's been very nice to build in, I think it's a very good looking case and I really do like the fact that on the front of the case you've got the customizable LEDs and that fan controller. But especially on a budget case I just think this is actually quite good. It's nice features that you don't always get at the budget end and it's nice to see that they're not really cutting any corners. And that's a common theme throughout the whole of this case, I noticed they didn't seem to cut any corners. The main problems are the fact that it's very easy to get marks on the case, the fact that you can't fit radiators at the top, and the fact that the basement down below just isn't really that big, and you're going to have to be very careful when you're fitting a larger power supply or a non-modular one, because you're going to have a lot of cables and not really that much space to hide them. So there we have it, the P400. An absolutely cracking case available at a cracking price that's very easy to build in and as long as you do your research beforehand and you know exactly what you're getting because it doesn't have that many drive bays and it doesn't have that many radiator options I think you're going to be very happy and it easily wins the top purchase award. A massive thank you for checking out this video and a massive thank you to Corsair for sponsoring the channel as always. For more videos like this then please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. A massive thank you and I'll see you in the next video.